Hey guys, welcome to episode seven of the Neo Wind podcast. I'm Rich Woods. And I'm Jean Carrasqueira. And I was just surprised now that it's already episode seven. I was very. I know, it's nuts, <laughs> right? We talked, we talked about this a little bit last week. I, we've, been, uh, we've been doing this for a couple months now. It's pretty cool. You know, and yeah. it's fun. So, um, yeah, how was your week this week? It was good. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I got that random burst of motivation to publish the podcast. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully you guys are listening to this on iTunes. Yeah, yeah. That. Speaking of doing it for a couple of months, we are still not uh, on on your popular pod. We do have an RSS feed that people can plug in, which is which is nice. But uh, obviously, we want to be searchable on these platforms. Yeah, it's very hard, and it still requires that people go through new ones. So hopefully now this is easier for everyone to, yeah, to do. Yeah, we'll get it out there everywhere soon enough. Yeah. Slow news. Like- week yeah um yeah. Slow. so this is what i thought was the biggest story was something that didn't happen was <laughs> <laughs> 19h2 right every every week we talk about there's a new windows 10 build in the fast ring and then we mentioned that there's still no word on 19h2 they said that that it was going to be in preview later this spring and today is the first day of summer Yep. So it's it's still not here. And here's the best part, right? Because I, I had this whole article ready to publish this uh, this morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. And then Rich Hay sent me this tweet from Brandon LeBlanc. Brandon LeBlanc's on the Windows Insider team. And I, like, I pulled the article at like 9.56 to add this <laughs> tweet to it. <laughs> oh, wow. Brandon, so, yeah. So our definition of spring doesn't necessarily match to exactly when spring ends and summer begins. It'll happen when we're ready. We're not operating against a deadline. Call it a delay if you want. And it's, uh, yeah, it's typical uh, Microsoft. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's it's typical Microsoft messaging, which is like that nothing to see here. You know, I, I cited some examples in that in that article of like um, like when at Build 2017, Joe Joe Belfiore announced some features and said they're coming in the Windows 10 feet, full creators update. They didn't arrive in time, so Microsoft publicly said we never said that. <laughs> oh, like, um, yeah, same thing when Windows Phone 8.1 was upgraded to Windows 10 Mobile. They said all devices would get it. They updated a small subset of devices, and they publicly said we never said that. <laughs> so, what's the definition of spring now? Yeah, how do you just <laughs> redefine spring? You can't. You can't just do that. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny because because uh, um, some people will say like uh, that these things that the, people do have different definitions of seasons, you know. Like um, if some if a company says something's coming in the summer, they might actually mean after Memorial Day because the U.S. Memorial Day is kind of uh, it's almost like a symbolic starting of summer, or they could mean June first. But these are all things that are earlier, not later. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that's. I mean, if you're gonna, they're gonna do this because they've just said it's like spring, but in the southern hemisphere, because you know the, the season's <laughs> <Yes>. reverse. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they'll release it in the fall, and they'll say, "Well, it, you know, in Australia, it works." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's crazy. I um, I I don't know what's going on though. It's it's like um. It's going to be a minor update. We know it's going to be a minor update. Xbox insiders are testing it. They haven't increased the major build number. It's it's still 18362.7xxx. Right? So so what's taking so long when this thing's going to RTM in 3 months? Yeah, I, it doesn't look like they're going to have anything new. So I don't know. I have no idea. It's basically like a cumulative update or it should be. Yeah, and, it's um, looking like it. Yeah, it, it's the um, the only thing I can think of is that it's going to the slow ring, and they they have trouble. They they've historically had trouble hitting the bar for quality in the slow ring. So even though the slow ring gets its own development branch this time, they still can't seem to get it done. But it's just the community. <laughs> oh, it's I know. Just, I'll be about just improving the quality. There's nothing else they need well, to do. I'm sure there will be not? some new features. <laughs> Well, well, otherwise it wouldn't be a feature update. They just service uh, 1903 for a year. So there's yeah. got to be something in there. We'll see. Maybe they have some, some surprise in store for us. 
The slow ring is just a waste of time, though. Now, <laughs> yeah, then it's I every time we do this. Every, well, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just I say that every time we have a new a new update cycle in in development. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's bad. It's, it started with Redstone 4. Um, and, like, you can check back through Flight Hub to see uh, the slow ring builds and when they've been released. And they, they have not been able to hit that. It's supposed to be monthly. It's supposed to be fast ring is, is weekly and slow ring is monthly. And that that's the, the schedule that Donna put into place when she took over the Insider program. Uh, they have not been able to hit that monthly target since, I think, Redstone 3. So, not good. Yeah, not good at all. Yeah. Sometimes they're like three or four months before they're releasing the first one. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But this is absolutely a delay. That's <laughs> whatever Brandon says. And I love Brandon. He's a good guy. But um, you know, I I just I and you know you know what what's crazy is that is that they're really saying what they're allowed to say. Um, you know you know that they can't come out and say hey. Like if Brandon wanted to, or if Jason wanted to, they can't come out and say, say, hey, this is what's going on with 19H2. This is what happened. This is what's going to happen. This is why it slipped. Like they can't do that. They haven't even, they haven't even publicly said that 19H2 is coming to the slow ring. They just said previews coming later this spring. So I feel bad for them in that, in that way. Yeah, it, it must kind of suck to be restricted like that. Because they probably yeah. know what's going on, but they can't say it. Oh, of course they know what's going on, but but um, obviously um, they you know their employees are a bigger company. And yeah, they have to follow that kind of messaging. So that's um. Although if I if I was branded in this case, I would have just said nothing at all. Um, <laughs> you know, like saying that that our definition of spring doesn't match. Uh, you know when spring ends. <laughs> 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 if we've redefined spring to to be from January first to December thirty first, and uh, well, it, you know, it's not delayed at all. Exactly. <laughs> it, it can never be wrong. All right. Perfect. So, what do you think next week? You think next week's going to be it? I don't know anymore, but <laughs> maybe, maybe I. We, at this we, point, I think we say that every week. I. Uh, Every every week they come out and they say, nope, nothing to share for 19H2 this week. I'm like, all right, definitely next week. It's got to be. You know, I thought for sure it would be in May. I thought I thought when they shipped the May 2019 update, the next week we'd have 19H2. But no. Yeah, because they use that as a point of reference. You know, after the May 2019 update releases, it'll, it'll do this. Yes. And then it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's weird. So they missed the spring target. And now... Um, We'll see. I mean, you know, this thing has to, has to RTM in three months. Three months. Yeah, that's not a lot of time at all. Yeah, yeah. But I do think it'll have some new features. I just don't know what. Um, so, Edgium. Edgium's available for Windows 7, 8, and 8.1. Some good news, finally. Yeah, it's good news. I don't know what took them so long. You know, it's it yeah. should be pretty much the same app as for Windows 10, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, the, the previous one already ran, if you tried it, right? It was a yeah, right, right. Run, so, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, the, the, the issue that, that they told me at Build was that, that the, the browser worked, but but they hadn't uh, built out the telemetry yet. And um, I get that, you know, but that still shouldn't have taken so long. Because, I mean, it was the same issue with, with Edge for Mac OS at the time, and, and that got out a lot quicker. Yeah, and... Yeah. I don't know. So, uh, you you think they have more in common between you know the versions of Windows than from Windows 10 to Mac OS? So it feels like it should have been easier. Yeah, it's still them. weird that they're supporting Windows 8 uh, specifically. Yeah, I thought <laughs> that too. Uh, right when they announced it, I'm like, why Windows 8? It's like you got a free upgrade to Windows 8.1. It's yeah. unsupported. So, and I, I mean, what percentage of people are even on Windows 8 and have not even upgraded to Windows 8.1 at this point? It's got to be tiny. I mean, you probably have some ad duplex article about that somewhere. They could always try to look at that. Or do, or do they not connect the previous at, versions of Windows anymore? At, at least these days, uh, I think they only do Windows 10 versions. Oh, okay. But um, there, there are there are some market share reports, and that it's very low. Very, I mean, because yeah, very few low. people are on Windows eight anything anymore. You know. But, yeah, even eight point one. Yeah. But, yeah. 
So, um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think the goal, the goal is to just support everything that Chromium supports, which I think will include Linux at some point. Um, but, um, it's just weird to see Microsoft coming out and saying Windows 8. It's like, like, I, I would have expected them more to say it's, it's here for Windows 7 and 8.1. And then if you've got a Windows 8 machine, it just works. Yeah, because it should. Any app that yeah. runs on Windows 7 just, just run on Windows 8 or 8.1. So yeah. I don't know. As a surprise. And then Windows 7, obviously, uh, and support in about uh, six, seven months. So, yeah. But it's that's still got a lot of users, so we can't read. Unless yeah, of course. Uh, I, 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 we, I think we were all kind of surprised to see Windows 7 support when they first announced it. Just because we know that support's ending soon, but um, you know, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I haven't used Windows Seven in years, so yeah, me, me neither. I I hate it. Like, see, ever, ever since I started using Windows Ten, I just every time I have to use something else, it just sucks. Yeah, one and thing Windows I hate 7, is like huh? Windows Seven feels slow to me. <laughs> Yeah. It, to me, it annoys me because it doesn't have snap assist. I use that way too much. Oh. Go, every time I have to manually resize the window. Uh, yeah, but you can right. still you can still pull the windows to the sides and it'll snap to the side, right? Yeah, and but it, it just doesn't. It, it doesn't give you the selection of windows for the other side. Yeah, and it also yeah. doesn't resize them. Like if you have one on each side, you can't resize both at once. Which, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, I, I, I think that was that was the first OS where where they added that feature though, where you could pull the windows to the side and automatically snap them. Because I remember that in the in the I'm a PC commercials, which were great commercials, by the way. I don't Do remember, remember them. I don't think I remember those. I have to be honest. Yeah, they they um it basically they got people say to saying like I'm a PC and Windows Seven was my idea. Like I, I always wanted this feature, and you know, whatever, and and I'm a PC and Windows Seven. It was, it was, it was a good, uh, good campaign, you know, which they haven't always done. But yeah, so that's only available in the Canary Ring. Devs coming soon. If I had to guess, within the next week, you know, they did the same thing for Mac OS. Yeah, um, yeah. this one doesn't support dark mode, and I guess that's because right now Edge pulls dark mode from the system settings and right. the system settings on Windows 8 and 7. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. They, they, they'll probably have to add that to the settings, and if they do, I hope they also give you the option to do it on Windows 10. Yeah, yeah, I bet they'll add it to settings. H how do they do it in Chrome? Because Chrome has dark mode. How does that work? Um, I have no idea. Still. I don't yeah. actually do not use, <laughs> don't use Chrome. So, I, I do know. have a Windows 8.1 PC around. Maybe I'll maybe I'll check that out later. I um my my original Surface Pro is on Windows 8.1. So there, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. Uh, new Edge Dev update, Chromium 77. Not particularly interesting, you know. Yeah, <laughs> not really. Just I think they proved that they brought the dark mode to the same feedback dialogue, and that's all I care about because dark yeah. mode is cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dark mode, everything. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's see. Edit a page in settings to choose your desired new tab page layout. Add an option, and the... this is so boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not really anything interesting here. I think. No, not really. Um, it's just, it's, you know, obviously Chromium 77 is a major update. It was weird how they released it. You know, they, they, on the what's new page, they had the article posted for, and it just said Chromium 77. And then if you click the link to go to the expanded change log, it just took you to the forum and the yeah, update they, wasn't live yet. It took them about 24 hours. Yeah, but they do that a lot. Actually, I mean, not 24 hours, but for previous updates, the ones that I wrote, I, I, I'd see the, the middle square there and it always take me to the forum. Oh, Not, yeah, it, it, yeah. It didn't take twenty four hours, but it, it, sometimes I just have to keep checking back for a while until they actually published it. Right. <laughs> yeah. This web view uh, SDK is a little more interesting. You wrote that. I, so tell us yeah. about. Yeah. I was surprised there were no comments on this one because I thought it was actually interesting news, but maybe Very I'm just weird. <laughs> maybe I'm just weird. I don't know. It doesn't look sexy by the title. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> I, I, I guess that, not. But, yeah. But yeah, it's cool. So basically, Microsoft, so Windows 10 right now has web apps and any app that uses web based services. Like if you if you try to log in with your Gmail account on Windows 10 Mail, for example, we have to go to Google's website to log in. And all the web rendering is done by Edge HTML because that's the, what comes ship shipped with Windows 10. Right. But now since Microsoft has this Chromium Chromium based version of Edge that they're working on, they're also making that uh, web view, which is what that's called, that rendering engine that they use. They're making a new version of web view based on the Chromium rendering engine. Yeah, this had to happen, you know, I mean, and, and I think they said this was going to happen a while back um, just because obviously they're not supporting Edge HTML anymore. So, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So now we can start seeing web apps in the store running off of Chromium, right? Exactly, and that's yeah. that's pretty nice. And they're also coming to previous versions of Windows, so because you can still build Win32 apps that use this. Oh yeah. Stuff. So yeah, you know anything that uses web content because it's just just not just about PWAs, but anything that has some sort of web content. Now it can be rendered using uh, this new web view based on Chromium. So that's nice. Yeah. Right now it yeah. only works on Windows 10 though. It's, Okay. Basically, like just like the new Edge, technically at the time, it was only available on the stand. So nice, yeah, nice. And I yeah, guess that's this will supersede also MSHTML, which is the one in Internet Explorer. So if you were using that before, oh right, yeah, for for uh, Windows Seven or Eight Point One, yeah. So that's yeah. this. So I, I wonder how many apps we'll see. I wonder how many apps will will convert. You know, we have we have plenty of web apps in the Windows 10 store, like more than than. It's crazy, you know. Yeah. Netflix, Hulu, uh, Twitter. There, there's a lot. There's a lot of just web wrappers in, in the Windows 10 store. So so uh, I wonder how many will move from from Edge HTML to Chromium. Well, what I wonder is how long Microsoft will keep. Edge HTML in Windows 10, and how, how soon people will be forced to switch. Well, I because... think the answer to that is uh, it depends on on what kind of support they get for this uh, coming out of the gate, because because if if they release because uh, I just said there, there are plenty of of web apps in the store right now, and if none of them go and switch, like they're not just going to boot Netflix from the platform. If if, oh, if yeah. they don't switch, you know, like they got to keep this around and they got to keep edge HTML around until at least um, until it's not important anymore to, to the content that they already have. Yeah, t Twitter and Netflix are the, the big ones yeah, I can think of right now. So that, that definitely will... has to happen. Oh, yeah. That, cool. Yeah, yeah th th there's a lot of them. There's, a, there, you know, they, they had a what was it called? Westminster? Project Westminster, oh, yeah, which is a host of web apps. So, yeah. like, it's been a thing on Windows 10 since the beginning. And, um, yeah, it, it's just, it's, I, I doubt that, I, I don't think they have plans to, to shut off the Edge HTML web view at this time. They, they, they probably hope that they can at some point because obviously it's dead weight on the platform right now. But I doubt they have plans to do so. Yep. I, I don't think they would do it with 20H1, for example, but it, I think it has to happen eventually. I just don't know when. Yeah. And hopefully most people or everyone will move by, by then. Yeah, I doubt it, though. <laughs> <laughs> All the relevant well, at, ones. At least not by 20H1. Here's the thing, right? right? This, this has to be a long-term thing. And I say this about Microsoft stuff often and I'm I'm always wrong but <laughs> but, but the, it, this has to be a long term thing like, like you can't expect everyone to move to webview 2 when when even even edge chromium isn't even in beta yet you know like it has to be like the main browser is not going to come I don't know when do you think they detach the, when do you think they stop shipping edge H, edge spartan uh with the OS 20h1 maybe I would think I would hope so, because otherwise they have like three browsers still yeah, shipping, yeah. and they said they wouldn't, right? So I, no, I they're think not they, that now. Yeah, so I, 
even if the engine is there, I I think they'll at least pull the the app, the full app, yeah, and just ship the new edge. Yeah, so so I would think at that point is when they would uh, expect Chromium Edge to to be more popular. I don't know, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, they, they, Microsoft always seems to want to uh, want everything to be a success on day one. So <laughs> maybe they 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 are hoping this all changes within six months. Who knows? Um, maybe I I mean I don't think so for twenty H one I don't think so but. From that point, that's when they have to start thinking about just phasing out H- 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 HTML. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really up to the developers already using it because I like they. I think they they they've said that that if you're using it, you're not in danger of, you know, like they've said they're not getting rid of it, but that doesn't mean anything, right? <laughs> that like they, yeah, could, yeah. they could be they could have an end of support date at you know, three years from now, whatever, but. I just don't think they will with, with, I mean, you know, look at the apps that are on, on Windows 10 in the Microsoft store. There's not a lot, you know, they, they, no, not a lot. and then you, you look at the native ones or, or, or even, you know, the, the converted, um, iOS apps, like, uh, Facebook's apps are still converted iOS apps, right? Uh, I think, yeah, they, they haven't changed. I don't use them, but I think they yeah, haven't I don't changed. use them either. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, like. If I look at the the apps that I download from the store, it's I I, I download Microsoft To Do, which is a UWP app. Then I download Netflix and Hulu; those are both web apps. Um, I download Slack, which I believe is a converted Win32 app. So so that to I me think, is the best apps on the store. You know, there's yeah. not much else that I would get. Yeah, I actually have a few. I mean, uh, a few apps, not a lot, actually, now that I think of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have my two because I like it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'll use the store more for games. I, I download a lot more games from the store. You know, and when I say games, I mean, uh, you know, real games. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean I don't mean like mobile games. I, I mean, you know, the PC game selection is excellent on the store, especially with uh, Game Pass for PC and putting Win32 games in the store. There's there's quite a selection in there now, but apps no, you know. <laughs> and so many of the apps that I use are already already web views and they're using Edge HTML. So we'll see what happens there. Let's talk about Surface Book too. Uh, so we have a new SKU. Is I don't know how to say that. Yeah, there's a new SKU. You can get a 15-inch Surface Book 2 with a Core i5 now. So when they, when they announced the Surface Book 2, uh, the 13.5-inch model started with a Core i5, a 7th Gen Core i5, and no dedicated GPU for $14.99. And then for $19.99, you could get um, a Core i7 and the dedicated GPU. Uh, the 15-inch model, however, started at $24.99, and you could only get it with a Core i7 and a GTX 1060 GPU and 16 gigs of RAM. So I've been saying for a year and a half now that they're, they're <laughs> going to they're going to release this thing with a Core i5 and no dedicated GPU just to um, lower the barrier of entry, and um, they finally did. You know, and uh, I think we talked about this maybe a month ago because someone spotted pre-orders on Best Buy Canada for it. So, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I actually I had the article ready to go uh, because <laughs> the pre-orders were scheduled to ship that day. So I think we actually had this story before anyone else. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so 1999 uh, Core i5 is an eighth gen Core i5 uh, i5 8350U, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, 256 gigs SSD. And uh, yeah, so it's five hundred dollars cheaper than the previous entry point. You still shouldn't buy it. It's, yes, it's, I, I'm just realizing <laughs> how expensive these things are. Look at, look at the specs for a two thousand dollar <laughs> PC. Look at those specs, man. It's <laughs> yeah. wow. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm starting I mean, to see your criticisms of Microsoft Surface. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not just the price, but like you know, two thousand dollars for a PC with a Core i five. No dedicated GPU, two fifty six gigabyte SSD, and sixteen gigs of RAM. So, so and no Thunderbolt three. Um, you know, you do get the form factor, and I, 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 um, I do not like the Surface Book form factor. You know, I have to admit, I am very 
uh, I like it very much for the the short time that I've used one at like stores or and stuff. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I have a Surface Book and I have a Surface Book too, and um, I, I've accidentally brought some to events with me, <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, the so thing is, accident. they're so top heavy because all of the the guts of the PC are in the in the display. Right. So so I use this thing on my lap. And and I'm I'm holding it down with my palms while I'm typing, and it's it's a very uncomfortable experience to me. Oh yeah, so, I haven't tried that because I can only try it at stores. It's right, right. I, I I love the idea of the detachable display, um, but it, it seems like like it's better served with, you know, like I'd be better served with just a regular convertible, where you know the base is actually heavier than the display. So I am yeah, not I've never a fan. Yeah. Now that I mentioned, it, I, I do have a convertible and I feel like that could be a problem if the weight is all on the display. So yeah, with any laptop, it, it's, you know, if you're yeah. holding it down with your palms, it's a problem. So, and that's why you can't push the display that far back on a surface book because it is that top heavy. Yeah. I, I get that. That's, that could be a problem. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Like, that's my my issue with Surface, though, is, is that with any any one of their products, um, I, I could easily say that that my needs, at least, w- would be better served by something else. And I could always name a product that I think is better than the one Microsoft is selling. Yeah, that that makes sense. I can, I can get that. Also, yeah. the Surface Book Two have that thing, or I think it's the, the Book Two. Where if you're fully loading the GPU and the CPU, it, it doesn't actually charge. It drains the battery faster. <laughs> yes, that's the 15-inch model, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, yeah they, they didn't ship it with a strong enough charger. Oh, my so. goodness. That, that is terrible. Because <laughs> the, the 15-inch model has a, a much more powerful GPU than the, than the 13.5-inch model. Um, the 13.5-inch one has a 2-gigabyte uh, GTX 1050, and the 15-inch model has a 6-gigabyte GTX 1060. So it's a lot more power there. And um, I've only used the 13.5-inch one, but um, the, that's the one thing I appreciate about the 15-inch one is that extra power. But that does not – you don't get that kind of power in the this $2,000 one that we're talking about today. Yeah, you know? <laughs> an i5 and no dedicated gpu but i like for the specs um i could get a convertible like that um for under a thousand dollars i'd say you know Honestly, the display no, would be nice. i mean i was gonna say my 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 convertible is was less than a thousand dollars and it's actually better than this the processor is better right right yeah um the screen yeah, isn't as good of course but yeah yeah so yeah, yeah I, have, I have a full HD, I think, full HD screen. But then I have a Core i7, and I have a GeForce, I think, uh, MX one hundred and fifty. I think that's the okay. One. Yeah. So yeah, and I pay like nine hundred euro for that. So it's... exactly, you know. <laughs> and just remember, this one has no dedicated GPU. So like like MX one hundred and fifty is not an impressive GPU, but it's better than no GPU. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, 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 I wish they could have brought this down a little further, but obviously they're not gonna, because it has 16 gigs of RAM. Like, you look at the the base model 13.5 inch one, which now I think starts at like 10.49 or something. It used to be 11.49, and that's that's an i5, eight gigs of RAM, and 128 storage. Um, the original base model was eight gigs of RAM and 256 storage for 14.99. So. These things are always expensive. Yeah, they are. But that entry model so- sounds a little less like a ripoff. I mean, well, but it's a <laughs> seven Gen i five, so yeah. I mean, um, you look at like something like the XPS fifteen two and one, right? It's a convertible from Dell, which is an awesome. It, it's one of my my favorite convertibles, along with like like um, um, the Spectre X three sixty fifteen. Um, so it uses KB Lake G. You, are you familiar with KB Lake G? Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, Intel's naming schemes are always. <laughs> yeah, so G G was um, it, it was basically an eighth generation processor, which was like 
the CPU was basically the same as seventh gen H series. And, but they also included AMD Radeon graphics on the die. So, um, looking at the page for the XPS 15 2 and one right? I'm looking at a model with a Core i7-8705G, right? With that, with that four gigabyte dedicated AMD Radeon graphics, 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD, okay? And the, and the, this is the 4K model. So you get the beautiful 4K display that Dell makes with the infinity edge bezels. Uh, seventeen ninety nine, okay, wow. <laughs> and you get yeah. a lot more power. Fifteen point six inch display. Um, yeah, so so I'm not sure why anyone would buy this. And if you really do want the sur- if you really do want the fifteen inch Surface Book two, you know, you at least get the one with the dedicated GPU. I know it costs another five hundred dollars, which is insane, but <laughs> still. All right, that's enough about Surface Book. Let's talk about this Office key. How do you feel about uh, it? <laughs> I have no idea how to feel about this. Why yeah. does it exist? That's my first well, question. Yeah. <laughs> so like Microsoft might be adding an office key to, to, I guess, desktop keyboards. They didn't say, apparently there was a survey that adding an office key to, to keyboards and in the survey it said, would you also want this on a laptop? But um, yeah, I don't know. I, you can use various shortcuts, I guess, to, to like you might, hit office uh x to open excel or something and it'll be i i don't want this on my keyboard yeah you know i I don't i don't see any use for this yeah well i don't i don't really use office the only office apps i use are OneNote, um skype i guess OneDrive. like i don't use the main office apps me neither i i don't have them installed actually Really? Wow. <laughs> That's a, I think I have them like when I say I don't use them, I mean like I very rarely use them. Um, I might use X, Excel for something once every couple of weeks. You know, it's it's not part of my workflow. You know, I work through the browser like I think many people do. And, uh, you know, I, obviously people use Office. I mean, it, it's uh, it's it's Microsoft's biggest business, but. I, I don't want I, I wouldn't want it to be a common part of keyboards like the Windows key is now. That, that's the first thing I thought of. Yeah, I, I really don't see any use for it, especially if it's Office dedicated. A lot of people also don't use Office or they use free alternatives and whatever. So it's if you're going to sell those keyboards, especially if it's a laptop keyboard, because you're just buying the laptop for what it is and not for the yeah. keyboard. So if you're building that into a keyboard yeah. and then people don't use office i mean that kind of sucks that's an interesting point too because um yeah pe- people might like the, with the windows key you're, you're selling a laptop and and people are using windows because windows comes on the laptop like nothing comes with office anymore you know yeah and, exactly and you might get a, you might get a free trial for office 365 but but you don't get a perpetual license for office anymore yeah, exactly. I don't. I use a free alternative to Office. What, what's that key gonna do for me? That's yeah, yeah. Even if yeah. I rely on that, yeah. this is dumb. I think we agreed. This is dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder. I just wonder how people would feel about it. But ah, let's move on. Auto update. People are starting to get auto updated from Windows 10 uh, version 1803 to 1903. This is not a surprise. They said it was gonna happen in June. So so. Microsoft had announced some uh, Windows update changes coming with 1903. So there's no more seekers thing where you hit check for check for updates and you just automatically get updated. Instead, you get that download and install thing. They won't force you to upgrade unless unless you're on a version that's that's about to be sunsetted. You know, if it's support for your version of Windows is about to end, they might automatically upgrade you. So that's 1803 right now, which is also the bulk of Windows 10 users, according to Ed Duplex. Um, so that's ending in November. So now they are beginning the stages of uh, the automatic rollout process. So, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. good, I guess. <laughs> nothing's really exciting there. Like, nothing surprised. They said they were going to do it in June. And um, it's June, you know. Um, I mean, I don't, that, I don't, 
That is surprising, though, that they're sticking to their words. That they have a, that they have a calendar definition of June? <laughs> that, they, <laughs> that they don't internally have a different definition of June like they do in <laughs> spring? Yeah, that is surprising. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's summertime, so, yeah. <laughs> it's not <laughs> It's not spring, you know. Like, um, I, 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 I always look at, at their statements. Like, you know, they have a different fiscal year than calendar year, right? Do you know yeah, about? Yeah, a lot of, a lot, a lot of companies things. do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 when when they say, uh, like, like back when Windows 10 first started out, they had that the it came out in July. There was an update in November. Then the next update was in August 2016, and the next update was March. Uh, 2017 so they they said two updates a year and they only had that one in 2016 i'm like but if you count it by fiscal years they actually <laughs> managed to do two a year <laughs> you know because the fiscal year ends at the end of june so oh they do have goodness. their own little internal calendars maybe that That's maybe that 19h2 is fiscal spring <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, Who knows? okay but yeah, so if you're on 1803, be on the lookout for that. Um, yeah, according to Ad Duplex, something like 61% of uh, Windows 10 users are still on 1803. Now, uh, Ad Duplex is not the, the most accurate thing in the world, but but it, it is um, something of a re representation. There's a lot of people that just didn't get upgraded to 1809. So um, yeah, be on the lookout for that. 1903 is a good update, though. You enjoying yeah. it? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm happy with it actually. Yeah, wow. And Game Pass Ultimate, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that. If you if you're into that, Game Pass Ultimate is a good product, man. I love it. I... Uh, oh yeah, it is. I, I just I really don't game on my PC at all. Uh, well, you should. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for now, and until I get tired of the Switch, which hasn't happened yet. That's oh, that's never my gonna games. happen. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I move on eventually. When Nintendo does, uh, yeah. I move on. <laughs> what else we got? Uh, 18.922, new Windows 10 build this week. Um, yeah, minor stuff from the change log. And once again, they had uh, a little bit extra that people discovered. Yeah, uh, that Cortana yeah. app. I mean, yeah, there's a new Cortana <laughs> app, which is completely separate. And um, you can you can activate it. We have uh, that link will be in the show notes. Uh, to our article and, and it's it's easy enough i just I, I i didn't even use mach 2 to activate the feature i just ran the command uh ms dash cortana 2 and uh it worked yeah i did that too i did it enable some of the other hidden features i think i'm going to do a hands-on video with the build yeah yeah i yeah um yeah. do you use uh mach 2 it's uh, I had to learn not to use Visual Studio because I'd never used Visual Studio before. So I, I went to GitHub, I just downloaded it and compiled it myself. You don't need to compile it. You should be able to just uh, <laughs> I don't know. You should be able I to get the it. executable. It's it's yeah, I've used it before and um yeah, it's pretty cool. Rafael Rivera is is a great talented developer that that made this tool where where basically you get these uh, feature IDs that Microsoft has and you learn what they are. And you can activate them through this uh, program. So, yeah, yeah, new Cortana app. Anyway, well, let's, let's talk about this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we didn't say what it, what it is. Um, yeah, so it's 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 in beta. It seems to be it's completely separate from, uh, I guess, the shell, right? Yeah, I mean, it uh, is. I noticed something when I was um, looking into it just briefly. I just happened to notice. I went to the, into the apps list. They now the the search and Cortana experience the young one in the apps list now shows up as um, legacy Cortana and search and then they have a, a new listing for Cortana which is his new. Oh app. really? Yeah. Oh. Oh. So wait, did did you activate the the features? Did you get Mach two working? I did, but I didn't okay. activate Cortana like that because oh, okay. uh, I wanted to have them side by side, so I didn't know if that would yeah. work, so I just ran it separately. Yeah, I, I was I was wondering if um. If that would become the default Cortana experience, if you activate those, I bet it would. I, I, I'm assuming so. That's why I didn't do it because I, I really wanted to have them both so I could sure. show it off. But sure. I'll try it after I, I record the video. I'll try and see how it goes. Yeah. Cool. Then, yeah. So yeah. New Cortana does the same thing as the old Cortana app, but it's a uh, windowed. 
you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. The, 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 there's not, there's not much to talk about there except that it's a new Cortana app. Yeah, it does give keep your uh, conversation history, which is interesting. That's oh yeah. Something. So there's that. If you know, they showed off some of that stuff at Build, like this new conversational stuff that that Microsoft is doing, and um, yeah, so that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I guess this is part of that. They they want to have that conversation visible. They can just go back and see what you've done. Yeah. 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 It doesn't work with voice for me. I, I could only type instructions, so I don't know if if that was just me. I clicked oh, really? the Microsoft yeah. I clicked the Microsoft the microphone icon and nothing happened. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll give it a try later on, but <laughs> I didn't try. Yeah. Oh, so but the fact, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I was say, the fact that you have um, text input is nice because they removed that from Cortana in 19.0 H1. Yeah, oh, really? Did. I don't yeah, use because... Cortana, so I never noticed. <laughs> I, I noticed because I did that, that hands-on thing in the, the article. So, I, yeah, maybe so you're the can only, only one that noticed. Now. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no one else cares, <laughs> you know? Yeah, there's certain things like like, uh, like Zach Bowden tweeted today about the, the new... The new OneDrive Live tile finally updated with the new icon, and I, I retweeted him. I said, he, "It says says the only guy that would notice." <laughs> yeah, know? it just started, like who who uses a OneDrive tile? That's true. Sure. I actually just pinned it just to Tell see. Me. After, after <laughs> I said that tweet, the tweet, I pinned it to see, and I don't have it, so now I'm sad. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> It'll show up eventually. Yeah. All right, let's move on to iOS. <laughs> You know, um, we got new new betas this week, right? So iOS 13, iPad OS 13, Watch OS 6, Mac OS Catalina, and TVS, TV OS 13. But the reason that, that it's important is that there's finally a configuration profile. And um, anybody can install it now. Oh, right? okay. You remember two weeks ago we talked about this. And uh, to install the beta, you had to, you first of all, you had to have a Mac running mac os catalina beta and then you you had to you had to flash the image onto your iphone um so now you could do what they've always allowed you to do or at least for the last few years um which is just download the configuration profile to your iphone you install that profile and then you just get the update over the air through settings like you normally would so so you know I, I assume that the reason they didn't do this to begin with was was to keep non-developers from installing this thing. They really don't want what they call thrill seekers. They don't want you to install this. And, um, uh. you know, they, they, they uh, the, these configuration profiles just they, they get passed around. And it's, you know, you're supposed to have a paid Apple developer license to install these betas and. A lot of people just pass around the configuration profile and, that, and that's it and because th they want to try it out early. That's not what Apple wants you to do. They want you to Obviously. wave the public beta. Yeah. But yeah, that's good. Now, now anyone yeah. can do it again. Yeah, there are all kinds of warnings around this thing and it's hilarious because no one listens to them. You know, <laughs> just never. No one's ever going to listen to them. Yeah, if if anyone was going to be deterred by that, they wouldn't be looking for the chance to do it in the first place. I'm pretty right, sure. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. So um, lastly, we have a, a new Kindle Oasis, right? Oh, and I know I, you I love e-readers. I <laughs> I love this e-reader, and that's why I put it in the show notes because the Indo Kindle Oasis is a great product. It is one of my favorite products. And and I remember when it first came out, and I, I told I told Andy that I was buying it, and he's like, "We pay you too much." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it starts at two hundred and fifty dollars. You know, yeah, and, it uh, is a very expensive e reader. But if you care about reading books, um, it's not that expensive. You know, it, it's it's a it's a good product. It's um, you know, it's got the the thicker spine it's a thin display it's very easy to use one-handed and other kindles are not because you have to you have to kind of you have to tap the display to turn the pages or um reach around to to hit a button or something and it's you you can't really use it one-handed this is by far the the best kindle yeah it seems yeah. like a very thoughtful design because yeah the, the buttons and the the way the the weight is going to be centered on your hand, so it doesn't like you don't have to try too hard to hold it. I'm guessing. 
Yeah. Because yeah. the most of the weight is in, in your palm. So you don't have yeah. to. So that seems like thoughtful design. There's that huge bezel, but that's good too because you don't want to touch the screen accidentally. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, that's there on purpose. Um, so the, the, the only thing that's new really is that, that um, you could change the color temperature of the display so that it's uh, more of a warm temperature at night. Um, you know, more of an more of an amber color, and uh, that's about it. It's it's pretty much the same as the last generation. There's still um, micro USB charging. Oh, there are more LEDs in the front. There's like 25 LEDs now instead of 12. Oh wow, that's that's a lot more. So yeah, they keep adding LEDs, man. I'm not <laughs> sure why. <laughs> like it seems fine, but uh, yeah. So so um, you know, it's, it's still a seven seven inch. Uh, 300 ppi display which is what they used last year the the original kindle oasis was six inches which i actually like a little bit better it was lighter a little easier to hold but um now it's waterproof so oh it is oh, that's nice i would buy it if it was USB C. <laughs> that seems to be a requirement for a lot of products it is well if you think, <laughs> here's the thing right you how often do you charge a kindle i every every three four weeks i mean even if you use it frequently, it's every couple of weeks, you know? Um, and so I have to find a micro USB cable to do this. You know, I, mean, yeah. I don't have one lying around because I don't have anything else that, that uses micro USB to charge. So. Yeah, I get that. You don't want to carry a charge for something, a charger that you, for something that you, you charge like twice, once every two weeks yeah. or three weeks. Yeah. yeah, so I got to like dig through my drawer of cables and find it. You know, it's it's just it's weird. Yeah, I, I, for a premium yeah. device, premium price device like this. Yeah, if you're charging two hundred and fifty dollars for a black and white screen, you should yeah. you should have at least get USB Type. Again, by the way, starting at two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh cause, yeah, because you... that that's for eight gigs of storage and it has lock screen ads. What? Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so so. 32 gigs of storage is 279.99 um and then you can remove the you can remove the ads for $20 by the way kindles have always shipped with ads they're not even oh, bad wow. ads too I, I don't mind it because i like book recommendations and so it's, it's all right um it gets bad when they when they when they throw an ad in there that's not a book recommendation cuz it's like why am i seeing this but um yeah, and that, what's cool though is that that if you go and spend two hundred and fifty dollars on this now, and you decide that you don't want the ads later, you can pay twenty dollars then. Like you don't have to get rid of the ads when you buy it. You could do it down the line, um, save twenty dollars now, pay pay that twenty dollars later. And then there's also a cellular model, um, which is three hundred and fifty dollars. So. Uh does that give you a free cellular for a year? Is there a limit? No, to all? forever. Oh, oh wow! Well, I, I <laughs> yeah. mean, that seems worth it, actually. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The the cellular plan on Kindles is it's always been free service forever. Because think about think about it though. What what are you doing with the cellular service? You just um, syncing your spot in a book, uh, maybe downloading a book, and um, to me, it's totally worth it because the thing is. Uh, Whisper Sync, which is their syncing service, whatever they call it, um, it's awesome, man. Um, you know, you, you're 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 on a certain page. It's also they sync with uh, Audible audiobooks, so so you're on a certain page that syncs with the audiobook. Now, if I'm out, you know, somewhere else where I don't have Wi-Fi, and I read the book, and then I get in my car and drive, and I and I listen to the audiobook. With a, if I have a cellular Kindle, that syncs. If um, oh, wow. yeah, if I don't have a cellular Kindle, then then the audiobook is gonna not pick up where I left off. So that is very sense. useful. I uh, I'm just surprised that it. I, I didn't know. I don't know how uh, this works at all. That's why I'm surprised that it syncs yeah. with the audiobooks. It, it yes. across. That's Great. very impressive for me. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, yeah, cellular is good, but you know they they have the the audiobook support on Kindles now um, on all generations of the Kindle Oasis, and I think a few other models. Um, you could hook up Bluetooth headphones to it and listen to the audiobook, which is uh, really dumb. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you're gonna buy a Kindle, I mean, 
Yeah, yeah but yeah. Why, why would you listen? Why would you ever um, listen to an audio book from a Kindle? Yeah, yeah, because that you can do anywhere. You the, can do the point of the phone. Kindle, and your phone <laughs> yeah. is in your pocket. You know? So, so why are you using the Kindle to to play an audio book? And um, yeah, I, I always thought it was weird that they that they include this, but I don't know, man. I, I think they they're just hurting for new features. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But you know, you don't have to. Right? If you have a product that works, and there's not really much that needs to happen because it's just books after all. I yeah, don't know. you don't need to add. Books. You don't uh, need to to do anything. I feel. Well, they've they've found a way though. You know, like they they yeah. found a way to make because Kindle has been um, out for what probably about ten years now, and uh, the product has improved in in so many ways over that time. So. You know, the second generation Oasis was all about uh, the larger screen being waterproof. Uh, they got rid of the charging cover. The, the original Oasis, it had a charging cover. And where, where um, because it, it was so thin and light, so I guess it had a small battery. So so they added, they included a case that had a battery in the case that would charge your Kindle. And it was it was bad, actually. It was, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't work well. The, the char- I, I don't know why, but. Rather than fixing the issues, they just built a bigger device that had a bigger battery in it uh, for the second generation. So uh, that was kind a of a fix. bummer, though. Because I, I, what? It's still a fix, though. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I just, I, I really liked the the form factor of the first generation one. So, oh well, you know, it's. <laughs> but yeah, like, like they, they. But what, what, what I was getting at is that, that they've improved that that e reader experience so much over that time. Um, to come out with with this so it can well i'd like to see color e ink at, at some point you know yeah that um, that'd be interesting but i don't know the it, it probably would defeat the per- at least for now i feel like it would probably use a lot more battery i don't know i don't know anything about color e ink i i just know yeah, that me. it's technology that exists and and oh. it's it's hard to get right otherwise they would have it but um, the only thing is, like, there are pictures in books, and that, that's the that's when, when you see a picture in a book, it's obviously in black and white, and that's the only uh, real advantage that you'd get to uh, using something like an iPad over a Kindle. Yeah, I, I get that. It would be useful. I, again, I'm just worried about worried. I mean, I wonder if that's going to have an impact on battery life and you know, defeat the purpose of any display. I have no idea, man. That's, uh, <laughs> that's up to Amazon to figure out. Yeah, <laughs> they have the money, so let, let them do it. Yeah. What else do you want to talk about today? No, oh, I have no idea. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I got an email today. Nubia is apparently sending me the Red Magic 3. They're gaming. Really? Phone. Yeah. Nice, I, it's about time someone uh, you know, <laughs> answered my, my calls. Man. Yeah, I, I actually. I keep asking for stuff. Yeah, f- speaking of people that you ask for stuff, I, I talked to people from Nokia yesterday. Uh, yeah. They they had a um, there was a Pepcom event in New York City. So uh, I don't know if you know about Pepcom. They 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 do these events, and basically it's just a, a bunch of gadget vendors that show up, and they have a booth, and you can just walk around, and um, they have good food there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think that that I think that that's the plan is to get everybody in for the food, and because a lot of time a lot of times these events are incredibly just dull with uh, nothing, nothing interesting. Oh okay. So, so but but uh, yeah, I talked I talked to the guys from from Nokia and and uh, I asked them when they're going to start sending us up to review, and he said that that the Nokia Nine they had very few they had very few review units. Is that okay? Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I, um, yeah, who else was, well, um, for me, it doesn't even have to be the Nokia 9. I just want anything. Any, I just want to work, man. Yeah, I know. They, they announced so many phones. I just want one of them. Or, you know, yeah. them. that's fine too. Yeah. But <laughs> Nokia yeah. 9 is, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of our, our readers on NeoWin are, you know, we're around for the old Windows phone days. And, yeah. uh, you know, Nokia means something and PureView means something. So, so, I I, re- I would really like it if we could get our hands on that that Nokia nine. Yeah, me um, too. Yeah, I I talked to uh, I talked to Coolpad. Apparently, they're a real company. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, 
Yeah, Lenovo was there. That was pretty cool. I lo- I, lo- I just love talking to the Lenovo guys. They're they're cool people. And I because I, I was also in the city for a Huawei event, and um, the Huawei event was pretty pretty interesting because uh, you know, here's the thing at, at Huawei product briefings, um, they always say like, hey, um, just so you know, you guys can ask us anything about the products, but we won't be answering any other questions. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. obviously that's, that's relating to their problems with the, the u.s government uh google cut them off from android licenses and everybody else every other american company cut them off and so they actually had an event where they brought in a bunch of huawei execs and they they let us talk to them and um yeah that was it, it, it was it was really nice to get that kind of uh transparency there was a little bit of propaganda there um of don't course. get me wrong well, here's the, here's the thing, though. It, it wasn't just tech journalists like myself. Um, I saw Michael Josh there, Narav, and, and um, is um, there was also people there from like NPR, uh, Reuters, AP, and so so like like people that that aren't it, tech might be their beat, but they're not regular tech reporters, so they don't uh, work with Huawei as closely as as I already do. So most of the stuff they're saying, like I already know. Like the 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 security thing, they they pretty much everybody there would say that the the whole security risk thing is just crap. Of course. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And I would just remember like, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> but one guy kept telling me he's he's like, we just want uh, Trump or the the administration to just tell us what they want. You know, he's like, he's like, yeah. they just have to tell us what they want. Like, they, they just kind of like, w- like, it's a trade war between U.S. and China, and we're just caught in the middle of this thing. And just tell us what you want. You know, um, you know, do, do you want us to to build a factory in the United States? You know, take credit for that. Take credit for creating ten thousand jobs. Just tell us. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because with ZTE last year, they actually did kind of tell them, you know, they had to like restructure their own, uh, their, their executives and, and whatever. But with Huawei, they're just cutting them off with no real anything, yeah. really. It's awful, man. And and I, I, I've worked with Huawei closely on a lot of stuff and, and um, I feel so bad because I, like I know a lot of the guys that work there and well, obviously communications guys. And um, they just make great products. They make really awesome products. And um, we don't get to experience that here in the U.S. Yeah. You know? Huawei has a pretty strong presence in Portugal, doesn't it? Yeah, they do. And I have to admit, I've never been a fan of Huawei more because of their software. So it's always bothered me a lot that people love it so much. (laughs) You know, I... I think we give software a lot more credit than it deserves. Um, I think that people in general don't care about software. Yeah, I like like the average user, you know. Yeah, that's that's true. That's why I'm I was upset to an irrational yeah. degree, I guess. But, but they do make awesome hardware, and I've been recognizing that more and more in, in recent years. Well, in months, recent years, guess, they've been making months. better and better hardware. You yeah. Know? Uh, yes, they, so... they 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 spend ten percent of their revenue, their revenue, not profit, on on research and development. So so they're putting hundreds of millions of dollars into just making their products better and better, and being able to do things that their competition can't. Um, it was it was weird re- reviewing a lot of products this year and um, comparing those products to Huawei. Like I, I'm more used to, to like a couple years ago. Um, you would review something and you would say, well, Samsung is doing this better and or, you, you know, or Apple is doing this better. And that, now it's it's Huawei, you know, like, like the Galaxy S10 Plus, you know, it was like, OK, so it has the whole punch display um, like Huawei did. You know? <laughs> yeah. It has an in-display fingerprint sensor like Huawei did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So triple lens camera like Huawei did. <laughs> it's, <laughs> they, like they, they're doing a lot of things first now. And um, yeah, and like that gradient. I, what I really like in their phones now is that they're making these gradient colors that no one else is oh, making. Yeah. Because the industry yeah. seems to be moving towards this dull scheme. You've got black, white, and gold mostly, and that's it. And Huawei is just out there making twilight and amber sunrise and whatever. 
And yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> they're, they're beautiful it's, devices. It is. They are yeah. beautiful. And uh, yeah. I realized that more like uh, and then we see when they saw the the view 20 with that arrow pattern. That was uh, the Honor view 20. That was very nice. That yeah. is the one, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, there's the yeah. a lot of things that no one else does in terms of hardware, the, the trip on cameras, and they they have that new sensor in the P30, the RYYB. Is that it? Um, no, wait. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, instead of RGB, yeah, RYYB, red, yellow, blue. And, yeah. Uh, so no one else has done that, and that's. And it works very well, apparently. I don't know. I don't have it, but you you praised it to yeah. to the moon and back in your review. So yeah, I, I by the way, I just I just got a, a message from Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he oh just said, said he he said no he he just said that that he he was joking, being funny and snarky, which <laughs> all right, you know, I mean that's fine. You know, I I you know like re revisiting that a little bit. I I, I appreciate when these guys do talk. Um, you know, my, it might have been a bad joke. But yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that's a joke. That's fine. You know, so yeah, I think that's all we got for this week, right? Yeah, I think so. We, we had a solid hour, wasn't it? I think yeah. that's good. Yeah. So, anything exciting happening next week? Not really, right? Well, not. I mean, yeah. not nineteen H two, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, event season is over. So, so like you know, w when we first started doing this, it was always like E3 is next week or WWDC is next week. Like we always had something else planned. So, yeah, you know, it's just kind of yeah, going with it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cool. Right, cool. H2. We'll just keep hoping for nine H two. Yeah. <laughs> we're just gonna say it every week. Next week, guys. <laughs> I just keep going at it. Just hope never yeah. dies. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll catch you next week. All right, guys. See you. Uh, I'm Jean Carrasquera. Oh, yeah. In the spot on Twitter. Oh yeah. I am the uh, I am the OSPOT, and at, you are. I'm at the Rich Woods. <laughs> oh yeah, you I can actually. I don't, I don't spell. I don't. I don't spell. <laughs> yeah, you have you have actual words, so that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you next week with 19H2. <laughs> yes. See you next week. <laughs>